want to make a fully playable stylized blocky character in Unreal Engine 5 for free. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to download, import, and set up this awesome commercially free character with ready to use animations. And by the end of this video, you'll have a fully functional character moving around in your level, complete with smooth animations and a working blueprint. Stick around whether you're creating a game, a prototype, or just experimenting. This is the easiest way to get a great looking character up and running fast. And if you want to learn more about making games in Unreal Engine, I have a full 70 hour course that will show you how to make a complete multiplayer survival game from scratch. We're talking drag and drop inventory system, crafting mechanics, base building system, open world map, harvesting system, clans and raiding, multiplayer proximity, voice chat, saving and loading, and even showing you how to set up a dedicated server and host it in the cloud. This is the most comprehensive course on how to make a multiplayer game inside of Unreal Engine that you'll find on the internet. So head over to my website, smartpoly.teachable.com to enroll in the course and kickstart your game development journey today. And with that being said, let's get right into the video. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is launch Unreal Engine 5.5. So go ahead and launch the latest version of the engine. So once you've launched the engine, you can go to games section and we choose from one of the templates. In my case, I'm gonna choose the third person template and just create this brand new project. And the second thing that we'll need to do when loading up is actually download the blocky character. So you can go ahead and download this from this Cube World kit from uh, Coordinates website. Basically all of these assets are free, so you can go ahead and download them and use them commercially. So just go to the download. It will take you to a Google Drive folder. All you have to do in here is head over to the characters folder and head over to the FBX and click download. And I'll go ahead and zip up and download the FBX, the characters as an FBX file. Okay, so once you've downloaded the file, you just right click and extract the files or just click extract all. And you should have this folder called FBX. So go ahead and open that up. And we have the different characters. So you have different characters to pick from. We will also need to download the textures. So in the drive folder, we have this atlas.png. Basically, these are all the textures. Just a very simple color sheet. And go ahead and download that PNG file. Click the download. But now you should have that atlas.png, which is just this little texture over here. So we can go ahead and download or import all these characters, or you could import one of them. But basically, I'm going to select the character mail number two and i'm going to go to my conduct folder create a new folder and call this underscore main i usually like to do this just to keep my project you know organized but in here i'll create a new folder for character that way i can import the character into this folder so select the character underscore mail two and drag and drop it and the first thing that you're going to see whenever you import a fbx or a character mesh is the import content uh, window Basically, all you have to do in here is scroll down, make sure that there's nothing selected under the skeleton. So this is set to none. Also, another thing is you wanna make sure that you import the animations. So if you scroll down, you want to check import animations to true and just click import. So that will import the character with all the animations. Now we just need to set up the texture. So back in the folder, we have this atlas.png. We can just drag this in here and that will import that texture. And we can open up this material called atlas atlas material so in this material graph we can actually keep things super simple we can just delete all these nodes by dragging and selecting and click delete and then if we take this little atlas texture and drag and drop it on the material graph we have these different nodes now we can hook up to our atlas material so take the rgb node and plug that into the base color and then all you have to do is click this save icon once that's finished saving we can close out of there and now we should see the material applied to our character so let's do a file save all before we do anything else just to save our work and usually what i like to do is move all these animations into the separate folder so create a new folder call this animations and then shift select all of the green animations so there should be files called animation sequences shift select and drag and drop that into the animations folder and click move here and that will just move all of our animations in that folder okay you could also make a folder for the materials and the textures but i think this should be good for now so in the animations folder we have the animations and we have you know different animations like idle attack we also have some jumping some running and much more so we're going to go ahead and create and set up our character blueprint with this brand new character so in order to do that you want to go to your characters you want to go to your third person blueprints folder and in here we have the third person character blueprint so if you haven't noticed already if you click this green play button we have the third person character template basically that character is powered through this third person character blueprint so if you double click and open this up this will pull up the 
blueprint for that character. You can take this tab and dock it up at the top. But basically, we can head over to the viewport tab. And in here, this is what the character is made of. You have a simple character mesh playing some animations. And if you select the character mesh, you can see it's highlighted in yellow. In the details panel under the mesh, we can change this and scroll from our list of character meshes in our project and select our character male too. So you can see right off the bat, this guy is not scaled up properly. So we want to scale this guy down and you can press R on the keyboard to get the little scale gizmo, or you can also input manually into the scale. So in my case, I'm going to import manually 0.5 on the X, Y, and Z to scale this character down. And now if we go back and hit play, you can say that we're already playing as this new character that we imported. However, we haven't set up any of the animations yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So to set up the animations, we wanna go back to the animations folder in our project. We wanna right click and create what's called a animation blend space. So we're gonna to go to animation and go down to the blend space over here and go ahead and select that. It's going to ask us to pick a skeleton that we want to add this blend space onto. So we want to obviously select the character that we imported. And we're going to rename this to our blend space underscore idle walk and run. And then just double click and open this up. So if you've never messed around with blend spaces before, it's really simple. Basically, they allow you to blend between one or more animations, allowing you to have an idle animation, walking animation, running, and much more. And you have a little graph down here that has two different axes that we can set up. So over here on the left, we have the asset details. You wanna to go to that tab and expand the horizontal axis. So under the horizontal axis, we can give this a name. We wanna name this to speed because the speed is how fast the character is moving. Then for the minimum value, we have zero. For the maximum, we wanna change this to 600. And then another thing we wanna do, we want to go ahead and start dragging animations onto this graph. So you can see right now under this graph, we have speed, we have the value of zero and the value of 600. So under the asset browser, this will allow us to drag in various different animations onto our, our blend space. So you want to search for the idle. And if we expand this, or if you hover over it, you can see the name of the animation. So we just want the basic idle, this breathing one. Okay, so drag and drop it on the graph and put it at zero zero. And what you'll notice is our character is now playing this breathing animation, idle animation whatever you want to call it. Okay, to actually see the name of this animation, this little dot, if you click on this little icon, it will show the sample names. So it'll show us that this is the idle animation. Okay, the next animation that we're going to need is our walk animation. So you want to search for walk and we should have this character armature walk, this top one. You want to drag and drop this again on the graph. And if you move it around, you can see that we can place it anywhere. But if you also snap it down to the bottom, you can see it's set to zero. And we can also set the value of the speed wherever we want to adjust and place this animation. Okay, so in our case, we want to set this value. So select it, you want to set this to 200. So that when our character speed is 200, it will be playing the walk animation. Now to preview this, you can hold down control and we'll move this little green cursor. So you see, if we move this over to the walk, playing the walk animation, if we move the green cursor by holding control down to the idle, you can see it's playing the idle animation. Now the last animation we wanna add is a run animation. So search for run and we should have this character run animation. So we're gonna drag and drop that and place it at 600 and just make sure that the value is set to 600 and this value set from none to zero. So now we have our walk, our running, and our idle. So you can see that the blend space allows you to blend between you know, one or more animations. In this case, we're blending between a run, a walk, and an idle animation. So that's all set up. We can go ahead and actually save this. One last thing before we close out of here is I just want to add some very simple smoothing. So if you scroll down here under the sample smoothing, we're going to give this a weight speed of 10. And this will just make it so that the blending between the animations is much more smoother and less snappy. So go ahead and close out of there. And now that we have our blend space created, we can go ahead and create a animation blueprint because in order to actually use this blend space to utilize this in our character, we need to actually create what is called the animation blueprint. So you want to right click and create a new animation and animation blueprint asset. And it's going to ask us to pick a skeleton to create this animation blueprint onto. So in our case, we want to again select the character male skeleton, the one that we've been working on and click create. And you'll see it creates this new animation blueprint over here. Okay, you can go ahead and rename this to ABP for anim blueprint and underscore character. Okay, 
that will be our anim blueprint character. So double click and open this up. And this is what the animation blueprint looks like. We have this little window preview of our character. Over here in the center, we have sort of this graph and this output pose. You can see it says animation. But basically, we want to go ahead and add in our blend space into this graph. So in order to do that, we'll need to drag off of this result. This is the output of the animation. I want to drag off of here and drop it on the graph and add what is called a state machine. So if we add this state machine, basically the state machine allows you to have different states for running, jumping, crouching, whatever you'd like, so that the character can change, you know, different animations based on the state. So hit compile, you can see that we have a warning right off the bat because we don't have any states in here. So if you actually double click and open this up, this will show you the state machine that we just created. And if you want to head back to the anim graph, you can head back to these different tabs. So double click to open into the graph, you can click back to back out of that. So we want to go in here and we want to actually add a new state. So drag off this entry, you can see it creates this arrow. And if you drop it, you can create a brand new state. In our case, we want to create a state for our idle walk and run state. And then in here, if we can pile it, you can see that that warning message goes away. And we can double click and open this up. So now that we're in the idle walk run state, you guessed it, we're just going to drag and drop our blend space idle walk run into the graph. You can see that it creates this green node and it even has this animation pose output. So we can just drag and hook that up and compile that and you can see this automatically playing our character idle animation, which is good. The other thing that we need to do is we need to take the speed value and we need to promote this to a variable. That way we can bind this to our character's walk speed. So we can get our character's walk speed and change what animation should be playing based on the character speed. So take this, drag it on the graph and we want to click the promote to variable that will go ahead and create a new variable of the type float under our variable section. You just want to hit compile and save. Now that we've done that, we just want to go ahead and bind this speed variable to our character's walk speed. So in order to do that, we'll need to head over to the event graph section of the animation blueprint. And we have two different nodes. We have the event update animation and we have the try get pawn owner. So what this try get pawn owner does is it gets the character of this animation blueprint. And so in our case, we want to drag off here and do a is valid. We want to select the is valid, this question mark node to just check and see if our character is valid. Then you want to plug in the execution and hit the compile button. So every frame, it will go ahead and check and see if our character reference is valid. And if it is valid, we can go ahead and off of that character reference, we can now get the speed of the character. So in order to calculate the speed, we'll first need to get the velocity. So we call the get velocity node. We have this function for get velocity. And from that, we want to convert this from a vector to a float. So we're going to convert this by calling the vector length node. And so the vector length will give us a float and that we can use to set our speed. So you want to take your speed variable and drop it on the graph and do set speed and hook this up for the is valid and for the value you want to plug in the vector length to the speed. So now we have our basic character speed set up. It's bound to the owner of this animation blueprint. So compile and save that. So now we just need to assign this animation blueprint in our character blueprint. So you want to go to your third person character blueprint. You can find this by going to the third person blueprints folder. But in here, you want to select under the viewport, select the character. We can under the details, see under the animation, we can use animation blueprint. In our case, you want to hit the drop down here for the anim class and select our ABP character, the one that we just created. And just like that, you can see that we are now playing the idle animation from our animation blueprint. So hit compile and save, and that's all you need to do. And now we can go back to our viewports and hit play. And you can see that we have our character walking. If we stop, you can see that we have the idle. Technically, the character is playing the running animation. So, you know, the character's movement speed is 600. If we stop, it's zero. So it's playing that idle animation. Okay, now you can see if we try and jump, we don't have the jump animation set up yet. Let's go ahead and do that right now. So in the animation blueprint, you want to head over to the state machine. So over to the anim graph state machine and in here we need to add states for our jumping so in order to add states you can drag off of the idle walk run drop it on the graph and create a brand new state in this case we're going to create three different states one for the jump start then from the jump start you want to drag off here create a new state this will be the jump loop and then drag off here and create a new state and this will be the jump land. So now that we've created all the states we can connect it together so take one last arrow and drag it 
onto the idle walk run. So in order to set all these states up, we can compile this. You'll see that we get a bunch of warnings, and that's because we haven't set up any of these states yet. So the first thing that we'll need to set up is our jump start. So we need to open this up. You can see that we have an output. Again, we want to hook up an animation to this output. So we want to search for the jump, and we should have three different animations. What we want to look for is the jump, this first one, animation. Okay, so drag that in and plug it in for the result. Hit the compile button and head back over. And the next animation that we need to set up is the jump loop. So head over to the jump loop state. And here we want to search for jump and we want to get the jump idle. So this one over here, where it's like the hovering in the air, drag and drop that in the graph and plug it in for the result. Then let's head back out. And the last thing we need to set up is the jump land. So double click that one open. And you want to search for the last animation, the jump land, drag and drop it on the graph and hook that up for the result. Okay, now the next thing that we need to do is we need to set up all the transitions. So in order for us to to transition from idle walk run to jump start, we need to set up all of these transition rules. Okay, so double click this first transition. We need to create a new variable in order to transition to our jump. So under the variables tab, we can click this new variable and that will create a new Boolean variable, which is what we want. And we're going to rename this to is in error question mark. And we can drag this Boolean variable and get that and plug that in for this condition of whether we can enter into the transition. So compile that, you can see that the warning message goes away. That is our first rule for entering into the jump start. Okay, we need to make sure that our character is in the air. Now for the next rule from transitioning to jump start to jump loop, we need to go ahead and open this one up. In order to do that, what we'll do is we'll check the previous animation, which is our jump you know, start animation. We wanna check and see if that is finished playing. So we can right click and use the node get relevant anim time remaining, get relevant anim time remaining jump start, which is the previous animation. We want to check and see if that animation time is less than less than 0.7. Basically, if the animation is almost you know, finished playing, we can plug it in for the result. We know that we can transition into the next animation. So now that we set up that rule, we need to set up the next rule to transition from jump loop to jump land. So double click and open up that transition node. And in here, we basically just want to get our is in air Boolean and check and see if we are not Boolean, if we are no longer in the air. Okay, so if we landed. So that will transition us into our land. And from finally, from our land to our idle walk run, we can double click and open up the last transition. Basically, we just wanna check and see if the relevant animation, the previous animation is finished playing. So again, you want to get the relevant anim time remaining. And this one is called jump land. Want to check and see if that one is less than, less than the value of 0.7. And the other condition we wanna do is we wanna do a or Boolean or if that animation is finished playing, or if our is an error, if we are no longer in the air. So do a not Boolean. Okay, if we are no longer in the air, we can go ahead and transition into our idle walk run state. So now we've set up the different states. We have our jump start, jump loop, jump land. These all have animations and these all have transitions. Okay, so they have different rules in order to transition into the different states. Now, one thing I forgot is we need to go into the jump loop. And since this is a jump loop animation, we need to select this animation and scroll down in the details and make sure that we click this loop animation. Otherwise, this will not actually properly loop. So just make sure that you do that. But now that we set up all of these animations, we need to now bind this is in air boolean to the character whether or not they're in the air so again in order to bind any variables to your character you want to head over to the event graph to do that and so in here we have a reference to the character blueprint so we can get things like you know their speed in our case we want to check and see if they're jumping in the air so over here we can get a reference to our character movement so we want to get get movement component pawn get movement component and from that reference we can check and see if the character is falling so we have this movement is falling. Basically, if the character is falling, we have this Boolean value, and then we can take that and set our is in air to that value. So basically, if the character is falling, that means that they are in the air. That means that they are jumping, okay? Let's go ahead and compile that. And now if we hit play, we can jump. You can see that we're playing the jump idle, we're looping in the air. And when we land, you can see we go back to our idle walk run state. Okay, so that is our very simple character animation blueprint setup and how you can set up this character, this blocky character in Unreal Engine with some simple animations such as a walking animation, idle running and jump loop, jump land and jump idle animation.